listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Buzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Revenge After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Revenge After Show. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to your favorite show on television, Revenge. We're in Season 3, Episode 8, Secrecy. I'm your host tonight, Roxy Stryer, alongside Sarah Giroux. Hello, everyone. And <laughs> Phil Speedtech. And as you can tell by the music that is being played, I am not in the booth. Because I wouldn't have picked this song. <laughs> okay, first of all, I think it's actually very clever. We have Marissa Serafini in the booth helping us out. Thank you, Marissa, tonight. What's up? And she, this song, you know, it's called Secrecy. This song is secret, so. Yeah. I get it. I, I think get it's it. clever. We'll give her props for it. All right, before we get started with tonight's episode, um, I was just revealed a big secret from Roxy, and okay. that, is, that is her sister is writing her um, <laughs> Maid of Honor speech. Now, Roxy, to catch you up to speed, doesn't have a boyfriend, but you know what? We are accepting applications. Info yep. at AfterBuzzTV.com. I mean, just why, Phil? <laughs> why? You just wanted to embarrass me a little bit. I was embarrassed last week for my birthday. Now I'm embarrassing you. That's the that's the phone call I got from my 16 year old sister this week. You know what? I've already started writing your speech. I'm like, I'm not even dating anybody. She's like, Well, you should be. Yeah, you should. You're getting old, Roxy. I'm like, Oh my God, I'm getting old. <laughs> anyway, people probably didn't tune in tonight to hear about my lack of love life. I but think they but they came in for a wedding. They did come for a wedding. That is a very good point. And of course later on in tonight's episode we'll be talking about the wedding shower. But I actually want to start with talking about Margot and, and what I'm calling her witch hunt. So she seems to have it in her head that Conrad is evil. Um, I don't know where she got that idea. Wah, wah. Conrad is totally crazy, but I actually don't know how she knows, but she somehow senses it. Maybe she's just good at reading people, and she's decided she's going to stop at nothing to figure out what he's hiding. Let me ask this. Do you think she came to that conclusion before or after he dumped her for the exclusive? Uh, definitely before we saw in last week's episode, she was searching for what the story was, too. She told Conrad... I think that you have something that you haven't said out loud. And she even was talking to Jack about it. Yeah, and if I think remember. that kind of confirmed for her that he was sketchy because Jack's reaction wasn't pure. Yeah, Jack tried to keep his his cool, but he yeah. really couldn't because, of course, Jack hates Conrad along with the rest of the show. But so. at least, at least not, before they were kind of in a cooperation where, like, because you can't really do an exclusive on someone if they're agreeing to do it and then just put out you know, something that they don't want, right? Yeah. So what now do you mean? Okay, if I agree to give AfterBuzz TV an exclusive, I wouldn't... Ag With Vule. I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily <laughs> agree to something that is obviously negative about me. That that wouldn't make sense. But now, now that he's ticked her off, now she wants, can we say, revenge? She has uh, her own uh, revenge. Yes, yeah, she does. Yeah, that's well, a hard word to say, by the way. And I'm not sure if I just said it right, but you I said did. it so quickly that even yeah. if I said it wrong, you would never know. That's <laughs> it the sounded trick. good. Thanks, I'll take it. <laughs> so anyway, Margot, she's approaching all these people, and Jack tells her she should talk to Nolan, which is obviously planned out because Nolan is on Team Emily and is not going to throw Conrad under the bus because they don't want Margot looking into it. Why do you guys feel like they're so gung-ho about having Margot not find out Conrad's secrets? Don't you feel like that would just be another way to reveal what Conrad has done? At this point, they they have a plan, or at least you know they're trusting that whatever Emily's plan is, it's going to work out, and uh, it's just an uncontrolled variable. So you think that they're just worried that she would expose him? It's not, you just, I mean, what she could, she couldn't. Again, but it's now now you have to just monitor it. Okay, yeah, well, I think it's another addition to their group of people that know the secrets. They don't want another insider. I feel like they want everybody to know the secret. You know, isn't yeah. that the point of it all? Well, I, they, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you can go ahead. <laughs> I think they 
they don't want to have another person that knows as much as they do. They don't want to get everybody involved because they're trying to work out some little plan. But what? here's the thing, right? They're trying to control the press. They're trying to make it about uh, Victoria. Uh, last week, obviously, with, with what happened, you know, now they're able to control the, the PR side of that. And as they said, you know, now it's now it's a story that they can plant with Victoria in terms of what happened at the bridal shower. This is focused on Conrad. Press about Conrad is not about Victoria, therefore it is not good. Okay, so as you guys are saying, they just want to be able to control how the information is leaked, and they don't want anybody knowing before they're ready to yeah. share it with the world? Yeah, and I think, I think ultimately it has to be about Victoria. In order for this plan to work, all things you know have to surround victoria if it's about conrad then you know this the uh, uh, killing someone might be minor story compared to conrad i you know what i mean as opposed to being the headline now it's on page six right absolutely and i i do think that margo is going to have a very difficult time getting down to uh, what actually happened however i could be wrong considering we see at the very end of the episode we now know who's back, who that party goer is. And of course, it's Lydia. So to refresh everybody's memory, in case you're like, wait, isn't that chick dead? Which we kind of were like, yeah. do you guys want to tell us? So we, of course, just to refresh our memory, how did Lydia supposedly die? Lydia is the woman who just can't die. She was thrown off a building, didn't die. <laughs> right. She's a cat. She, <laughs> uh, you know, at the end of season one with the, with the uh, plane crash where we thought Victoria died, we later thought Lydia had died. Right. So she Lydia, is not dead. <laughs> Lydia was getting on the plane to go expose. She had information that would expose Conrad. Yes. And she was getting on the plane with Victoria. As we know, the, the plane exploded. And we thought that um, the only survivor was Victoria. I now assume that we were wrong. Yeah. Because we see Lydia tonight. How on earth did Margot find Lydia? Any thoughts on that, or did Lydia search out Margot? I think you. Need, I, 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 unfortunately, I don't know this side of it, but I imagine you kind of put out ads or whatever in the sense, like, hey, looking for a story about blah blah blah. Well, she did say she was going through all the names of people who worked at Grayson Global, and she was trying to contact them all. But wouldn't she see Lydia's name, and then it would just say deceased? Or did people just assume Lydia was dead, but nobody ever checked up on it? I mean, if Victoria was alive, you would think that, and she somehow snuck off the plane, you would think that she would know that Lydia was alive, correct? Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> I, I, I concur, yeah, I do believe I... it is weird. <laughs> so anyway, I would have to assume that Victoria is somewhat aware. Yeah. That Lydia is alive and that no, she didn't tell anybody for a reason. No, but she has that line, Rammer, where she says, uh, Lydia is mentioned earlier in the episode, and I forget the exact line, but but it's to the extent that, oh, you know, uh, that's where he was taking Lydia or whatever. Like, she's basically dead. Right, to the bachelor pad. Yes. Yeah, and Conrad said, rest her soul or something like that. Yeah, man, she was. Exactly. Yeah. But I think that her being back is going to bring up a lot of questions. Obviously, one of our qualms with this show sometimes is they'll they'll pull something like this, and then it, we can pull coals in the plot a little bit. And actually, as we were talking about a couple weeks ago, how much we love this show, and people get upset because we, we find problems with it. But <laughs> recently, I'm noticing more and more people are appreciating poking holes in the plot and, and finding these things because... You know, there's a lot of them, and I'm, I'm wondering how they're going to deal with this one. Obviously, they've thought about it, and there has to be some sort of explanation. I mean, they're not going to just leave Wait, it be yeah. that they both got off. So I, I think we're just going to have to wait and see. But what do you guys think that Lydia being back will do for the storyline? Do you think she's back for revenge, or do you think that she's still supporting the Graysons? I mean, she wasn't at the very end, but she was originally. So where do you think she lies right now? I think she has revenge plans, and maybe the fact that she does, she'll decide to help one side or the other, whoever, I'm guessing she would want to help Emily, but... Okay. Yeah. You think she would want to help Emily? How would she even know Emily was looking to be helped? Emily would have to find her. Okay. Which wouldn't put it past her, right? Very true. What do you think, though? <laughs> 
I think once Emily gets wind of this, she'll manipulate Lydia into something, but I don't think she's going to consciously go up to her and be like, hey, what's up, Lydia? You know what I mean? Because we had that whole debacle of who is Emily Thorne, remember, with her, so... Although it could, I, right? Because you're talking about when the Lydia photo. saw the photograph, and it was of Emily at, as a caterer, yeah, at the Graysons, and then <laughs> that's when she was thrown off the building and had amnesia, and and that was all some, starting to come back to her, and then Emily altered the picture. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Keep going. I, I so just, just as a refresher, because there are <laughs> so many revengendas. Re- yeah. Not yeah. as good the second time. <laughs> going on. It's because we thought about it. Um. Ultimately, you know. Although I'm rooting for Emily, I love to see whenever the plot thickens for Emily and she has to kind of deal with it. Okay. And so ultimately, I don't think, I I think Lydia, while she might be a threat to the Graysons, she's also going to be a threat to Emily and her plan. So Lydia is not doing anybody any favors. Except Margot. Except for Margot. They're going to be quite the power team i wonder how lydia and conrad's interactions are going to be i mean somebody that you believed was dead that you were sleeping with for quite some time and all of a sudden, all of a sudden. she's back well now you don't have the bachelor pad though where are you going to take her <laughs> uh, that was my question about the bachelor pad yeah, whoops is the bachelor pad only allowed to be used by one men one man at a time yes so there's one key. so there's one key and <laughs> Okay. Like you, you wouldn't want you wouldn't want to walk in on your son, like oh you're using that okay. Whoops. I think they would shoot each other a quick text first, like yo the pads mine tonight, tonight you know <laughs> tie on the doorknob. Yeah exactly. Oh my god, totally creepy, <laughs> creepy. We'll talk. Okay, but here's the thing. House. Okay, first off, the reason just just why this wouldn't work. Okay, a father and son. You would not want to know when this is going on. You would not want to text your son or father, being like hey. You using it tonight? No. Oh, use it. I'm gonna use it. Okay. Like, but then I just... wouldn't put that past the Graysons. They're sketchy. <laughs> just... I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We don't have to spend too much time on this. But... No, I think I, I actually think we do have to spend some time on this. Let's talk about the bachelor pad for a second. So, I, I'm I'm even confused to this moment. What was his name? Anderson. Anderson was the one at the bachelor pad. The guy. Let's call him the butler. The butler. The butler. The butler. He's clearly working for the women of the family, correct? Even though the men of the family believe he's working for them? Yes. So there's this bachelor pad. I mean, this this was <laughs> probably my favorite part of the episode because all this said was like, women, power, we know your secrets, and don't you think... You know, Conrad <laughs> thinks he's being all suave and with his pad and none of the women have ever known, and Victoria totally throws that out and is like, we have this key if you want to call. Creepy, though, that Butler picks up the phone and is like, oh, yes, uh, thinks it's Victoria. Mrs. Grayson, <laughs> yes, your son's here with his female partner. and uh, Everything's fine. They're in for the night. <laughs> t- talk about something you wouldn't want to know. You know, you don't want to know when your father's doing some and random. Like, yes. <laughs> uh, di- didn't you think this was a really weird moment? Because it's like. Daniel is so much against Emily being like his mom that he's not even realizing he's becoming his father. Yeah. Do you guys agree that Daniel is becoming Conrad currently? Totally. I think he's still on the edge, though. His morals are holding him back a little bit, but he is going in that direction. You think so, too, Phil? In certain aspects, yes, but, I, you know, he's... By being with Sarah, one of the things that he's trying to do is become kind of innocent again right he didn't he wasn't really associated with he was associated with the grace's name not grace and global um and he was kind of writing more which he's kind of now doing um with margo and Voulet, right yeah Voulet. Ooh, excellent la. pronunciation uh, <laughs> and then uh so I, th- I think by being with sarah i i don't know if he fully loves her but he loves the idea now of a simpler time yeah. With with Emily, it's complicated just in general. Right. Absolutely. And we can get more into the relationships in a little bit. But just, I don't know, as a woman, you can tell me if you feel the same way and then you can give a guy's perspective. But as a woman, if a guy was taking me back to like his bachelor pad and I knew he had a home and all of it, I would never show up at a guy's bachelor pad. Would okay, it- question. But But he did say I'm going to dump her. 
It's it's you and me, baby. Still, I mean, but she didn't know that going. The first th- yeah, she was like, I just came here to say that I can't do your wedding. Honey, you could have said that over the phone. Yeah. yeah but she was I was nice thinking that while we were watching it. No, she wasn't. That's not being nice. That was her thinking like one last goodbye. <laughs> oh, maybe. Just maybe. I mean, how skeezy is it to have a bachelor pad for the reasons of taking your mistress? That's just yeah. that's slutty. Okay, yeah, that I, is slutty. slutty. Watching all the shows that I've watched, a lot of men have apparently bachelor pads. What I've also learned is <laughs> what that other is show? Mad Men. Oh my God. Did that silence everybody in the crowd? Thank you. More importantly, I am horrified. Every, no, wait, st- everybody clap for Phil. Brilliant. Yes, Phil. However, thank you, Marissa. Thank you. Yes, yes. More importantly, for the for the male demo that is listening, don't ever get a bachelor pad. The women do know. Watching from all these shows, they the women know. know. Yeah. They oh know God. because we are smart high five yes we are and <laughs> okay, resourceful just, and you can't get anything past us i just want to yeah. this is this is not related to the show but a good story and a life lesson nonetheless okay well, um wow. actually i'm gonna i'm gonna start with two i'm gonna start with two and then kind of i'm gonna give one then give it an analogy i bet people tuning in tonight didn't know they were gonna get life lessons from the phil Svitek. i know wow crazy. we should sell this for a lot of money Okay, first off, guy, guys, no matter how smooth you think you are, you're not. Because here's why. Th- there's a friend of mine who I know who threw a huge party, right? Cleaned everything up. Wife comes home, and she sees towels in the dryer. And she's like, you threw a party, didn't you? Because it was, it, was, the, 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 it was a larger amount of towels than normal. Do you want to know yeah. what the lesson that should be taken away from that is? What's that? Just don't bother cleaning up then if you're going to get caught anyway. Exactly. You You're a smart girl. <laughs> but so so as guys, here's here's what you ultimately have to accept. There's an old um, mob story where the mob hunts down this guy who's who's driving in his car. They they pull him out. They say, "You stand here." Um, they draw a circle in the sand and say, "You stand here. Don't move." And they go to burn his car. The car burns and it explodes. They turn around and the guy's laughing. And they're like, why are you laughing? We took all your money. We just blew up your car, um, all these different things. And he's like, well, because while you guys were doing that, I stepped out of the circle three times. <laughs> and that's going to be your life as a guy. Okay, so I'm just curious, just to bring this back full circle in our circle, not his little standing circle. This relates... Because no matter what, the women will be smarter than you. And all you can hope to is get out... Is it women that burned his car? For the purposes of this, let's say yeah. yes. Yes. It was the witches. It was the witches. So as Victoria. as so Daniel, Conrad, Jack, Nolan, everybody else, uh, just all you can hope to is potentially just get out of a circle three times. That's all you can hope for. Three times. Yeah. That's the magic number. Yeah. And by the way, that doesn't mean that you're. Com- by the way, committing adultery, that is not stepping out of the circle. Not- stepping out of the circle is you having ice cream when your wife tells you no. What? Your wife's telling you no to ice cream. So right. We can get back to revenge, by the if way. If that's stepping out of the circle, then what is it that Daniel just did? Uh, he. Daniel did cartwheels in a square 4,000 <laughs> miles away from the circle. Yeah. He, that's, he, that's what he, Daniel did. He done messed up. He did. He did mess up. And we're going to talk about him a little more later. But I want to talk about his little sister first. I just the mystery of the season is Charlotte and what's going on with her and what's in her head. So tonight we get this new story about her that when she was in Europe, I dealing with not being pregnant anymore or dealing with the pregnancy. She was also taking artistic. Oh, yeah. Nude pictures. (laughs) And they were on her phone. And somehow. A guy gets a hold of her phone. And no, wasn't the guy taking the photos? Because that's how they were able to be artistic. But wh- how did she lose her phone then? Yeah, yes. Well, she lost her. F- they were they were ended up on her phone, but it wasn't her. It wasn't selfies. No, it wasn't selfies. I think he was taking them, but she lost her phone, and that was the problem. Yeah. But wh- hold on, if if she lost her phone, did and he had her phone, that's how wouldn't he have had the? Well, pictures? he stole her phone. Right, but wouldn't he have had the pictures if he yeah, was the where, one taking them? Uh, well, he the, took them on her phone. 
That, apparently, that is the only place that these nude photos are is on her phone. Right, because when what you're blackmailing, camera. right, <laughs> when you're blackmailing somebody for forty thousand dollars, you don't just quickly email the pictures to yourself. Yeah. No, that's not something you do. You just See, leave them on the phone only. That's what's weird is he got that or she got the message to her computer. Was it from her own phone then? Yeah, it, it seemed that way. Yeah, that's silly. So I would think that our maybe not, but this might not be the last of seeing this guy because I would think that these pictures Hard exist drive. elsewhere. Yeah. Okay, this is why I'm probably rele relegated to the booth, but I think the more important question is she said, <laughs> why can't I have a boyfriend? Which I thought was funny. Yeah, no, I wrote that To down. me, that was the yeah. more important Charlotte plot. Get back in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, so explain. Why do you think that that is the most important part of Charlotte? Because Declan, you just forgot about Declan. Like, you had a boyfriend, and yes, it was very tragic. That is why you don't have a boyfriend, because he died, honey. <laughs> he died. Already. It's not that you can't have a boyfriend. It's not that you can't get a boyfriend. <laughs> it's that he died, unfortunately. <laughs> she doesn't remember. <laughs> and, and of all people that she's talking to about it, it's she, Jack. It's it's the boyfriend, yeah. the dead boyfriend's oh brother, God. and he's like rooting her on. I mean, I get it. He is dead. He so, wants her to be happy, right? Of yeah. course, of course. But I don't know. She's like, oh, it would be inappropriate for her to have a boyfriend this soon after. Yeah. It's not like she's been out searching for one. And weren't you also just like a little lesbian a minute ago with your friend? <laughs> <laughs> Call your friend and see if she wants to hang out <laughs> and stop taking nude pictures. And being a celebrity. Yeah. With all these nude pictures out there of yourself. She's making a bad name for the Bang Sisters. I'm you like just this. you just love her because everybody says you look like her. <laughs> and she's so pretty. And you're so pretty. You're going to have to want to oh, disassociate with her because she's turning into a slut. Yeah, that's what I mean. I'm going to have to like cut my bangs off or something. Okay, I think that we're going to get back the Charlotte that we know and love okay. at some point. But it's not quite yet. I want to believe you with all my heart. She, she can't go bad because... She is our female character. Jack is our male character that is always rising above and always doing well. And he right now is being crazy too. And Charlotte, we can't have all of our good people turning bad. Exactly. There's only so many good people that can go bad. Everything is going to realign. That's what I'm hoping, at least. I, I, I agree. <laughs> but anyway, so Charlotte, of all people, contacts Aiden. I guess Aiden's just the person you call. When... He's like... <laughs> He is known as Hitman. He is known as Hitman. Yeah. He's known as Hitman? Because that's what like Charlotte... people's phone. But Charlotte knows what Aiden does. It's never been stated what Aiden does, but people know that Aiden just fixes things. But what we did not know was the first one's for free. Yeah. <laughs> so he takes care of Family Charlotte's discount. little problem for free tonight. Uh, but he does it because he wants to steal her computer? Yeah. He wants to gain access to a computer. And he did that how? That's what I missed. What do you mean he didn't what? He, what how? he gets the phone back. How did he get the computer? Oh, you can control a computer remotely. What do you no, mean? No, remember, okay, before she leaves. I'm, I'm going to put on my nerd goggles to try to understand this right okay. now. Hold on. <laughs> when they talk, when they talk, he says, okay, I just need access to your email so I can make contact with this guy. Oh, right, 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 right. Good call. So... He, yeah, easy that was enough. Very, very good. Easy enough. Oh, I didn't even need to put my goggles on. Let me yeah. Yeah. Them off, put them away for now. So anyway, he does this for her, and right before that, he is being weird and not telling Emily that she texted. Why do we think that he's being so, so much secrecy is involved? Okay, the title of the episode. Yes, included it. Ooh. Why is he being so secretive? Why isn't he telling Emily what's going on? I feel like he's been burned for this so many times. She keeps getting pissed at him over and over. Why are you leaving me out of this? Why aren't you telling me about this? We're supposed to be on the same team. It's happened a million times. Why not tell her? Your sister texted me. I think Aiden is a Scorpio who just, um, if a female tells him to do something, he'll, he'll want to do it in the and and however he needs to he doesn't want to seem incompetent right so the original plan as we're finding out is that all these things need to trace back to um victoria so okay we got the gun who cares and, and i love nolan and his speech of like well, who cares if this is some lecture on how i should treat my girlfriend go after yourself nolan <laughs> okay so speaking of that just because we haven't mentioned it yet about the gun so now we know that they're buying the gun to have it be in victoria's name 
Yes. Which we had a feeling about, but now yeah. we know for sure. So that's who they're trying to frame. Yes. As the shooter or as the weapon. And that's why he ultimately needed access to the house, was to make these purchases and whatever else needs to be set up to make this happen. Right, but now he doesn't need access to the house because he already has access to her computer. Yeah. So Jack gets pissed about this for a couple reasons. Number one, the obvious reason. Nobody Mm -hmm. wants a fight going on inside the bar. Yeah. Number two, Aiden already threatened him. So, of course, he doesn't want Charlotte anywhere near Aiden. Um, and number three, he's still in love with Emily. Yeah. Do we agree? I mean, to me tonight, when he went to Emily's place, it was very clear. Yes, he likes Margot. Yes, what? he's in love with Emily. Always have been. Always will be. It is not puppy love, as Aiden describes it. It's real love. Yeah. To me, that's like the Sarah Daniel issue, where they have all this history together. So, they feel like or at least um he feels like he belongs with her and she might feel like that but i think she's on the aiden path so far what do you think the problem is it may not be puppy love for jack but he is like a little puppy whereas aiden's a man and right or wrong he takes control of the situation and of emily and yes they argue every now and then but but again he's just uh, there's a lot of you know there's a lot of energy there with Jack it's a little more subdued had Jack on there kissed her we could have had something you think she would have kissed him back he should have just forced himself on <laughs> he wouldn't um, no, because Mar- Marissa, not can that I get way. one of those the views here uh, expressed by after buzz thing not that way yeah thank you had he thank you Marissa had he gone in for a kiss okay just she would have accepted and, and Phil is the one giving you advice tonight, but his advice was you should force yourself <laughs> upon the member of the opposite sex. If you want somebody. No, 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 no. That is, that you are taking that out of context. <laughs> okay, sorry. Put it back in context for me. Okay, because <laughs> deep down, who does she really like? Jack as well. And so you know what? Would she, he, it wouldn't yet. She, here's, he needs to do something to prove his love for her. And by doing that, he is. If she didn't like him, then yes, that's that's wrong. <laughs> okay, how did you guys think that Emily felt when Jack said, when Jack told her what Aiden had done? You know, we see we see her say, what? You know, but she doesn't really explain how she felt. Was she feeling betrayed again? Did she feel bad that Jack knew? What's going on in Emily's mind when Jack comes over? She was definitely shocked, but she didn't make like a huge deal out of it because she's Emily and she's kind of chill like that. And she doesn't want Jack to know how she's actually yeah. feeling. Um, but then it came up in the end of that conversation how he was saying that she's always been so good at keeping secrets and why would he know what she's thinking at any time? And then she dropped that um, whole what did you wish for thing on him. So I feel like For she, things to never change. Yeah. I think that whole situation made her feel a little, oh, great, like maybe... Maybe I am keeping secrets, and that's not so good for that relationship. I thought it was very bizarre that as a young, young girl, when you look up at the stars and you get to make a wish, there I think that this is huge. There are two different types of people in the world. The person who wishes for the same thing on every star and the person who changes their wish every time. I'm somebody who wishes for the same thing every single time. Always have. I can't imagine what life would have to be like for me to wish that things never changed, that things always stayed the way they yeah. were. Yeah, how did she know it was good enough right. right then? It was weird to me because now she's clearly on this path of revenge, but as a young girl, so she must have been under 10 years old. Yeah. That's what she wished for on every star. Did you guys find that weird? Yeah, I did, and when I was watching it, I was thinking... Right now, today, I always wish, like, oh, I wish I could go back to when I was little. It was so fun then. But I wouldn't have known that then. So it's weird that she knows that. Is she a fortune teller or something? I'm not sure. It made me think that she was a girl. You know, now she's so obsessed with revenge. And I used to always think, before revenge, what did she want to be when she grew up? And usually, you know, maybe you would wish on the star, I want to be a firefighter or something. But I don't know if all she ever wanted was to be happy because she was happy right then. 
then maybe this revenge thing is almost a cover because she doesn't know what she really wants. Not a cover, obviously. She's definitely out for revenge. Yeah. But I don't know. That it just it struck me funny. Pottsville didn't didn't strike you funny. Female psyche is too complex for me. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. We we are. He said we're difficult. smarter or females, not us in general. Females but are that smarter. Includes yeah, us. No, that includes us. Win for Females us. Females are smarter. And then he said we're too complex. So I'm really liking this right now. <laughs> I'm liking the compliments tonight. I'll yeah. take it. As long as you don't force yourself on any of the <laughs> Yeah. I'm just kidding. You're oh like, oh, God. please don't hold that against me forever. No. <laughs> That's, I wasn't insinuating. <laughs> I wasn't insinuating in that sense. You just wanted him to take control. I see what you're saying. I I yeah, I, I do get what you're saying. What too. girl wants a guy that's never going to add, like, just even the smallest of sense, like, hey, what, what girl doesn't want a, a strong guy that says, hey, you know what, tonight, let's go out for dinner, rather, you know, rather than, like, tippy yeah. around the issue. Yeah, no, I absolutely Let's be agree. real. But yeah, you don't... you're right, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> and Phil and his fan club. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Phil, you're right. Okay, but what do you think about Jack makes him not a man? Because, again, he didn't. He wasn't. He wasn't direct in, in in anything that he said. Like, here's the thing, right? He's he's toying with the idea that he still loves her, and that may be implied and all this and that. Subconsciously. Too, subconsciously, but he needs to communicate that directly. And guess what? To her. You think that he should have gone over there and said, "I don't think he knows. I don't think he's yeah. thinking I'm in love with her. I think he's confused. He's like." Oh my God, Emily doesn't know this guy. Why is she sailing away with him? I'm I'm freaking out, and he doesn't know why. Yeah. We know why. We know why, but I don't think he knows. You, yeah, you he doesn't think? realize that he's freaking out because he's actually kind of jealous of Aiden. Right. He wouldn't be freaking out if he didn't care about Emily. Exactly. To us, that's obvious, but to him, I don't think he's connecting the dots. Yeah. I mean, men men don't usually connect the dots because women are the more intelligent superior yes. of the sex no <laughs> but i don't think i mean do you think that jack knows actively knows that he has feelings for emily and that this thing with margo is just a fling i think to some extent but i right now what the bigger drive is that he just doesn't trust aiden and partly he's torn because aiden in some sense he got in some sense aiden's right remember he says to jack like hey i know what it's like to lose family members have had it happen to me so it's weird because Aiden's reaching out to him but then he's also making threats on his life to an extent so yeah, he doesn't know I, th I think that's the the first thing he doesn't know how to comprehend that then let alone the, the sea of emotions that's going on with Emily right and then we hear Jack say tonight to Emily I could never hate you yeah which just solidified to me you know he said not for lack of trying that even though he doesn't want to like Emily, love Emily, feel for Emily, care about her, whatever, he he just can't help himself because you you can't help the way you feel. Yeah. So I, I do I feel bad for Jack, and I really feel bad for Jack because Emily and Aiden seem to be although Aiden is keeping secrets, Emily and Aiden seem to be really happy right now. I mean, this could just be me, but their makeout sessions recently seem to be very steamy. <laughs> And very, very intimate. I think they seem to be really in love right now. Yes? No? Yeah, but for me, I'm that hopeless romantic. And Jack and Emily, it's the same opinion that I have about Sarah and Daniel. I, As much as I'm a little bit confused about which way I want her to go, Aiden or Jack, I still have a slight preference towards Jack just because of that. The childhood sweetheart yeah. thing. The Cory and Topanga. Yeah, you got it. I know, I know. I'm a sucker for that, too. Just, again, I'll say it over and over. I Unfortunately, I love Aiden and Emily together, but I do need her to end up with Jack. Yeah, I don't hate Aiden, but I feel like that relationship has a little too many uh, lie situations. I want to start talking about, you just mentioned Sarah a little bit ago and, and what was going on with her and Daniel, and I want to start talking about their relationship so in tonight's episode, we see the farmer's market, and he goes to see her. And we can tell that feelings are developing or redeveloping. And 
I, how are you guys liking Sarah as a character? Do we think that she's malicious? Do we think that she's a sweetheart? Are we enjoying her presence on the show? You know what? I love her. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, her character is not so dynamic because she's not evil. And I think the characters that have a tendency to do bad things stir us up a little more. But Sarah is morally on the right track. And I can't help but love her for that. And Phil? Phil? I don't dislike her. I mean, I don't hate her, but I also I think she's doing a really good job on the show. I like the character. I'm not her biggest fan because of what I'm not her biggest fan because obviously she's with Victoria and things like that and uh you know, she's trying to do it for love, but she's also helping Victoria and uh I don't think she she you know, it, people can go to the dark side very easily. And I think she's getting there. You think she's getting there? Oh, yeah. Because of her makeup because session? They just ordered ice. Anderson, get us some ice. You think that they had sex? <gasps> I forgot about that. They're actually. tucked in for the night and they need yeah. ice? But why do you need ice? The champagne. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'm even sure. Marissa said it. Champagne. <laughs> Cha- <laughs> Roxy. Marissa, I love you. And you know Thank why you need champagne? Me. Because so you can cheers in bed after you've done... Coitus. Or or maybe they do some freaky stuff in bed. We don't know I what mean, they're into. I mean, we don't know. They're not building a slip and slide of ice. Ooh. What? I don't so, know. Oh, oh, quickly, Roxy, move us on to the next topic. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay, so Sarah and Daniel. <laughs> Sarah and Daniel, they're a little into each other. And by a little, I mean a whole lot. And, of course, we know Charlotte and Victoria are trying to get Sarah with Daniel because they don't want him with Emily. And in order to get Sarah into the plan, Victoria decides that she's going to prove to Sarah what a bad person Emily is. Sarah's hesitant because Emily already approached her at the farmer's market yeah. in just the most creepy way possible. Yeah, she was like directly behind her all just of a sudden. so incredibly creepy. Like, ugh, give me the yeah. heebie-jeebies. But, you know, she pulled out the waterworks, and it's like, eh, eh, eh. and Sarah feels bad and pulls yeah. out her heartstrings, and so Sarah doesn't want to do it. But Victoria's like, I'll show you, and Sarah agrees. And so Sarah is the dessert planner at the wedding shower. And when she's at the wedding shower, Victoria's big plan is to play this game. <laughs> now, this is the best game of all time, because it involves blindfolds, and people from people's pasts, and just a lot of fun and guessing. So you blindfold a person, and they tell a story, and then you have to guess who's walking into the room. Did I get that right? Yes. Yeah. And Daniel does a couple, and they're funny, and a lacrosse player, and whatnot. And then, Victoria gives a speech. (laughs) And it's about how sad it is that Emily has so few friends. How bad she feels that it was so hard to find somebody to make it because oh my God. Emily has no loved ones left. Like, didn't you just want to slap a bitch in the face? Yeah. I mean, I did. come on. Yeah. It was, it's absurd. Sometimes Victoria gave Charlotte this whole speech about being polite tonight. Nothing about Victoria anymore is polite. Oh, I mean, no. of course, it's the upper, you know, the Hamptons, and, and they fight with a smile, and, <laughs> you know, like this. But that makes it so much worse. Then you add the fake stuff on top. Of course. Yeah. So this seed had been planted episodes ago that there's actually an ex-husband in Emily's life. And we found out tonight that's true, and his name is Rohan. We just didn't know that Emily was smart enough to contact Rohan so after searching and searching, Victoria finds him, and she brings Emily's ex-husband, and she thinks it's going to be this big blowout, but what happens instead? <laughs> Basically, she ends up eating her own foot. Is that <laughs> yeah. the expression? Yeah. The, yeah. And you I was going to say cake. Eating her own cake. <laughs> Can't have your cake and eat it, too. Uh, okay. Here's no, a, no, no. You know, you know how I feel about that. I know, <laughs> I know how you feel about cake. Here's the thing. I love cake. What is the point? I actually tweeted about this this week. What is the point in having cake if you cannot eat it too? Yeah. I understand what it means is you can't physically have cake and have eaten it. You can't eat it and have it. But everybody should be able to have their cake 
And then eat it too. And then that eat it. That just makes perfect. And yes. then eat it. <laughs> I would like my cake, and I would like to eat it too. And is there anything you would wrong like to with have that? cake and then eat it too? I want to have cake and eat it too. Okay. Yeah. You know. <laughs> anyway, Vic Victoria gets neither. She doesn't get cake, and she doesn't get to eat anything. She, or except for her, her, her foot. foot, yeah, her yeah. eating crow. What's the expression? Anyway, <laughs> so basically, Rohan comes in, and we find out that Rohan is gay, and his lover is there, and Emily only married him so that he didn't have to get deported, which just once again proved what a good, good, loving, caring person she is, and that actually happened. It wasn't just an act; she really did that. Yeah. And Rohan went to Takeda's school. The I want to know. I exactly. Where is the application for Takeda's school? I would like to apply. Well, he's dead. Okay, that's a good point. <laughs> However, the school must go on. <laughs> maybe Emily should take his place. It's kind of like Hitch. That's know... what she's going to do when she dies. Uh, Emily and Aiden can direct the revenge to Kate's school. That would be so sweet. I actually would like that. Yeah. It's kind of like Hitch. You're, it's only by referrals. Yeah. Uh, who do we know? Who do we know that can refer me there? Emily? You got to get to Emily Van Camp. Okay, easy enough. I'll just call her after the show and ask yeah. her. Yeah. That's cool, right? It's Twitter. <laughs> so Emily does this, and, and we think, did you guys think after finding out who Rohan was and that Emily and him weren't serious, that Daniel was going to be upset? I didn't think that because I didn't think it was, you know, it, it goes the opposite way where you, you know, you were expecting him to be like, oh, well, well okay, well, she's a good person. I didn't think he was going to get mad because he doesn't really get mad. He's sort of a pushover. I don't know. I feel like he gets mad a lot at Emily these days. He gets mad, but he he always comes back around. Especially because he's looking for an out. I felt like this was kind of an yeah. easy out, but he didn't take Which, it. Which, he didn't take it, but then when he was talking to Sarah in the evil bachelor pad lair, <laughs> they were... He was saying, well, you know, actually, I am kind of mad about it. Okay. Because he just wanted to try to get in Sarah's pants? Yeah. Do you think that's why? I think he was trying to come up with the out that we were talking about to get Sarah to stay with him because she was going to leave. And he's trying to convince himself to break up with Emily. I just... This is the thing I've never understood about cheating. And I guess because of the baby, it's a different situation. But why not, just to save yourself the trouble from being labeled as a cheater, why not, just if you know you're going to break up with Emily anyway, why can't you just wait? Yeah. Why not just wait until you break up with her? I think that's what Sarah wanted him to do. What is going on in a gut? You know what? <laughs> he wanted his cake and to eat it too. He did. That's what he wanted. What goes on? <laughs> he he defied physics as he was doing it. He was doing it. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that Emily, when she called in and and heard that they were there, she assumed they were hooking up? Wait, think... it's after she heard that? Yeah. Yeah. So You don't order ice <laughs> just because you're having a great philosophical question. They could have been parched. Yeah. I don't think You so. don't know. After what? Why are they so parched? Because it was a long ride. <laughs> I bet it was. <laughs> it was a long journey. I too bet it was. Too much cake. <laughs> too much cake, yeah. They need a little ice with that cake. Yes, they do. So now <laughs> Emily knows this, and in her genius brain, in her terrible, crazy genius brain, she thinks, how do I get him to stay with me? Because clearly, making him fall in love with her hasn't worked the way she thought it could. Because he's in love with Sarah. Because we have the speed bump. <laughs> right. The speed bump named Sarah. So, of course, she pulls out her bag of tricks and is like, mmm, rabbit's foot, no, I don't need that right now. Mmm, fake ID, nope. Mmm, passport, nope. Mmm, what is this? Pregnancy? A sonogram. Oh, oh, yes, this is perfect. I'll use this trick. Puts in a little box, puts a bow on it. <laughs> okay. I liked her her thing where she says, he comes in, I, I we need to talk, I have something to tell you. And she's like, no, no, no. Let me, me first. first. Because did she know that he was going to say? Oh, absolutely. Oh, duh, yeah, definitely. Now, we don't quite get to see his reaction 
Oh, what? it was like, oh, sh no, we saw his reaction. It was, oh, shit. No, we see his reaction face, but we don't see whether he, I mean, there's no way he goes through with now what he was going to say. Oh, absolutely not. Yeah. No, like, that was clear. Correct. So, <laughs> I mean, is this one step too far? On Emily's part? Yes. Well, how is she going to keep this up? She only got to keep it up for two weeks. Yeah, but No still. one's going to be able to tell if. Yeah, wouldn't you want to go to the doctor's appointment or something? But yeah. Emily's got mad people in her corner. That's she's true. got doctors. She's got people that work. You know, she has people having her back. So she just... writes my check to lie for. Her, so. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm sure if that's. If Dan was smart, he'd be like, "March in that bathroom. Here's a pee stick. You ain't coming out until but we verify this." But he's not aggressive this. enough. He uh, would never do something like that. I know this is a prediction, but I'm going to say it now anyway. When we see that Victoria pushes Emily, maybe Emily. Has a miscarriage, you know, mm. and it's Victoria's fault. <gasps> and then Daniel hates her even more. That's what just happened on Sons of Anarchy. So I'm, spoiler I'm <laughs> alert. <laughs> what? For people who watch Sons of Anarchy but aren't quite caught up. Okay, well then they should be watching a little quicker. Um, it was it was a couple <laughs> episodes ago. Oh sure, there's only six seasons. Um, are you not caught up, Phil? Are you bummed out now? Did I ruin it for you? I mean, I was... I didn't say which character. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> it could have been one of the men. Yeah. Having a miscarriage. Good for him. Yeah. <laughs> that would yeah. be, that would that be would very be... impressive. Yeah. Also, I just wanted to quickly mention the necklace thing, the gift exchange. Ooh. I was surprised that Emily didn't catch on quicker. Yeah. You know, she usually knows that she didn't assume that it was for, uh, that it was for Sarah. What did you guys think about this? And what did you think about the whole story and the reason behind the necklace and him keeping it all these years? Great story for him. Yeah. Not so great for Emily. No. Yeah. Not so much. Even that, to me, like, keeping something like that, isn't that kind of cheatery? Like, Yeah, I know what you mean. It, yeah. me it meant that he still had feelings for her. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> it's emotional cheating. <laughs> Look at Phil. <laughs> what? You think, I think it's crazy. funny. You just disagree. <laughs> no, I just wanted to know how long he would have kept that necklace and then, you know. I mean, what else do you do with it? Here's the thing. You can't re-gift. That's you, true. You can't give jewelry to one woman and then another because that's weird and rude. Unless she doesn't find out, I guess. But when, I, I you understand. can't throw it away. Yeah. I, under I understand that. But, okay, let me ask you this. Is it okay to be, you know, it, had he told Emily? I'm just trying to learn. <laughs> not that this would ever happen because clearly in this unit it would just mess up too many things but could he have told like Emily like hey this is a necklace I gave once upon a time to Sarah when I thought she was dead is it okay if I give it to her uh, no okay uh, got it Moving but then on. it would be weird can if I, Sarah wore it can I give my ex-girlfriend a $7,000 necklace Okay, seven thousand dollars. I mean, but, I'm, or, I'm I'm Daniel Grayson. Seven thousand dollars. That's like pennies. So you know how poor that is. <laughs> or, but I see where you're coming. I from, do too. Phil. Like she already had it at one point. So can I give it back to her? That was, I actually I my reaction was strong. I I if somebody said that to me, I would say yes. Yeah. I would say yes, but I would. If I was explaining this, I'd be like, it's just a passing on. You know what I mean? Right now, I've been holding it for all these years. And you know what? By giving it back to her, it, it, it breaks our bond. And I'm with you, baby. That's what I'd say. Or if you'd like it, you can have it. But I think that'd be kind of weird. You know, yeah. like if you put that little clause like, in there. Do you want this? Great, <laughs> No. So anyway, I think that pretty much covered the episode. Are we missing anything, guys? Uh, I think we covered every Good. life lesson we could from tonight's episode. Yeah. This has been a very moving, emotional, life lesson giving yeah. episode. This was a great episode. It was. And it's not over yet because... We still have some news and gossip brought to you by the one and only Sarah Jerome. Okay. Well, first of all, we do have. Um, well, I will say, second. Frank, remember <laughs> Frank from the show? He did amazing in Captain Phillips. Go see that movie just for Frank. <laughs> okay. I won't spoil anything, right, but he right. goes. Uh, one of the guys says, two green, one red. And Frank just screams, I need three green. Amazing. Amazing when you see it. Oh, it sounds really and, good. And that's how <laughs> Phil sees it. It's true. Good. Marissa knows what There's I'm talking passion. about. No, I think Marissa's laughing because of my Glee reference I did because that's how Sue sees it. <laughs> that's how Phil sees it. So. Oh, I didn't God. catch that, but I got it. You know what? Stop bringing all the shows into this. 
Okay, I can't help it. I'm a TV addict. <laughs> I am. Okay. They have twelve step programs for that. I, like, uh, uh, uh-uh. <laughs> I won't quit. I won't. Don't it's like, I don't me. have a problem. <laughs> In actual news. Yeah. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> Um, Nick Wexler is featured in Brink magazine. He's on the cover. He has a whole spread on the inside. It's awesome. Also, I retweeted a 10-second recap of the magazine, so if you want to check that out, at Sarah GGG. Um, And he was quoted saying, I'm not a star. I'm just some dude. And I thought that was awesome. Like... He is just a dude. He, when yeah. he came in here, um, was that last season that we had him in? Season two finale. Season two finale. He was so just a dude. It was in awesome. the best way yeah. possible. Yeah, in the best way. I mean, it it was endearing how self-deprecating he was. <laughs> like yeah. he was just like, I'm just not that great. I was like, number one, you're a dime piece. Yeah. Like, how could you be any cuter? Number two, you're so talented. Exactly. Um, so, but yeah, he's he's very much like that. Uh, which is nice to hear because a lot of people out there are not. Exactly. Yeah, I like him. He's He seems like a nice guy. I haven't met him yet. Maybe one day. Um, and has anyone ever wondered what happened to Amanda Clark? Uh, yes. Every, every night before yes. I go to bed, I cannot <laughs> sleep. What well, happened? Well, her actual real person that she is, Margarita Laviva, she has a movie coming out in 2014. It's called The Loft, and it really ties into the episode. It's about five friends who have this loft that they use for their extramarital affairs. For That's all fun. we know, she could be coming back to the show because apparently when you're dead, you're not actually dead on this Yeah, show. I was thinking about that today. Also, just really random, I saw a commercial with Shakira in it, and I thought it was her, thought it was Amanda Clark. Well, they do look a little similar. They I could see that. They look very similar. Really I could, weird. I could see Just that. Just random. But Is that our news and gossip for this that's week? That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and on to... Am I supposed now, to do that? You're after yeah, Buzz yeah. TV. <laughs> predictions. What's your best, like, predictions dance move, guys? Uh, I, I don't uh, know. Uh, I haven't really, uh, like, It's a cartwheel and a half. Um, <laughs> a cartwheel out of the circle in the desert. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> we don't come back till December eighth, right? Don't say it. But that's it, right? It is oh. true. I think that's the date. <sighs> Which means that we're definitely gonna need some interactions online. Yeah. How do you do that? Well, of course, you listen to us on iTunes and you comment and we read all of them. And you go to our YouTube and you comment, and a lot of times we write back and we'll comment back. Or, of course, you tweet at us. Where can we find you? At Sarah GGG. These uh, are amazing. I, I, uh, just don't be forceful. Um, <laughs> on this con- with these comments. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know. Um, <laughs> don't be forceful. <laughs> okay. Okay, but here, I'm excited because I we're um, we're skipping so much time space. Like we went from. Two months to the wedding, and then you know, last week it was you know a month to the wedding. Now we're at two weeks, uh, so we're getting to the wedding fast. You know, we might as well be. On, I think by next episode we'll be on to the wedding. No, we got three weeks to the wedding, is what they said. And they said that three weeks ago. No, they said four weeks, five, five weeks. No, we've got three weeks to the wedding. So what? Okay, but that's, let's that's go crazy. over. This is what I like to do. I like to write down everything I can possibly see and see from next week because it goes so quickly, and we'll talk about it. So. We see there's paparazzi like swarming Emily at one point, and then we see that Emily and, Vic- uh, and Daniel tell Victoria that she's pregnant, and that's when I was predicting that there was the maybe miscarriage type thing. Victoria's in handcuffs. We don't know what's up, and <laughs> Lydia wants Emily to get what she deserves. So it seemed to me like they were not working on the same team. Yeah, that's not usually like a friendly. I would love you to get what you deserve. Yeah. It seemed more like a... Maybe she wants to have cake. You, but she can't eat it. She can either have it yeah. or, or she or can she eat it. it. Um, <laughs> and, and that's pretty much what we saw. So any other predictions from you guys? No, that's about uh, it. I don't know. I just really liked her wedding dress in the preview. That's all I can That's true. I'm she really... Bu- we're hitting such a strive again. <laughs> Entertainment Weekly said, like, we're hitting the uh, the zenith of season one. Um, and why? now we're on a break. I really hate that. I know, I do too, but when we'll be back, we'll be back better, bigger, stronger. You may not be able to have awesome. your cake and eat it too, but you can have your turkey. Oh, and yeah. And then eat it. 
<laughs> and, and decided whatever the hell you want over the holidays. Seriously, happy holidays because we won't see you guys before that. And of course, as I said, keep the conversation going. You can find me at Roxy Stryer. You can talk to us here at AfterBuzz TV. Sarah GGG. Woo, got it. Please contact us. Without our revenge, we're going to be dying. We need, we need some fan love here. And until we are back, which is December 8th, was that the date? December 8th. December 8th. Until then, we will see you. Peace. Bye. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Oh, and real fast, there's a fan comment that just came in that said, Emily is allergic to strawberries, as we found out in some sort of episode I don't have in front of me. In Rob's Mrs. Reading. Grayson's in season one, well, what happened if Emily, if she makes a cake with the ingredient of <gasps> strawberries instead of lemons as a substitute? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. <laughs> 